Hi guys, Brain the Squirrel I am back with another video. And for those of you that are wrestling fans, you will know that the Greatest Royal Rumble was on Friday. To be honest, it really wasn't much of a pay-per-view. It felt like more of a house show. It didn't live up to what a pay-per-view usually is. Because not much really happened, I'm gonna maybe talk about a couple of the matches here and there, but I'm just mainly gonna give you the results. And then we'll get to the end of the video where we'll go into the forfeit. So the first match that we had was John Cena against Triple H. We've seen these two put on good matches in the past, but this really wasn't like what it could have been. It just felt like a normal match between two superstars. The crowd seemed really into it, uh, but I guess that's just because it was two high caliber superstars. Big match, John won this. Uh, there's not really much more you could say about it. It was a standard match. John Cena finally got a victory at a pay-per-view, which I guess is good, so yeah. So next, we'll move on to the Cruiserweight Championship. That was Cedric Alexander against Kalisto. This one felt really good. It was because it's the 205 Live Superstars. They are actually brilliant in the ring. Quite a few good spots in there. Kalisto actually showing how good he is uh, because it felt like Kalisto was just starting to disappear for a long time. But yeah, uh, I guess that was good. And a uh, good move. They went with Cedric Alexander walking away with a victory. So the next match that we had was Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy against The Bar for the Raw Tag Team Championships. This kind of just felt like a normal tag team match that you'd get on either Raw or SmackDown. Not a bad match by any account, just not a pay-per-view caliber match, if you get me really. Entertaining, I guess, but just not a pay-per-view match. Uh, Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy walking away with a victory, which we, we kind of all saw coming because... Well, the bar have only just moved to SmackDown, and if they got the titles, they'd have to move straight back to Raw, so it'd be kind of pointless having them in the Superstar Shake-Up, so yeah. Next match that we had was Jeff Hardy against Jinder Mahal. Now, going into this, we thought that Jinder Mahal was actually going to win because of the whole Saudi Arabia crowd and that, but no, instead, uh, Jeff Hardy walked away with a victory. I mean, it's not, it's not a bad call really because Jeff Hardy is brilliant and this could mean we go ahead with a Jeff Hardy Randy Orton feud for the United States Championship so yeah we had Jeff Hardy walking away with a victory there let's talk real quickly about this botch that was pretty bad for a botch the whisper in the wind like not even near Jinder Mahal and Jinder Mahal went down from it uh, you can't really go with a botch like that if it was me I would have uh, redid it to be honest because even redoing it would have looked a lot better than what they actually did the next match was the bludgeon brothers against the usos um i kind of wanted the usos to walk away with a victory on this but uh the bludgeon brothers ended up walking away with a victory they did look powerful so going forward i think they're going to have them completely dominate in the tag team division but i guess we'll have to see what happens there i'm at the point now where i'm pushing past the whole bludgeon brothers gimmick i'm, I'm trying to ignore it because Eric Rowan and Luke Harper are great talents, so I'm trying not to let the Bludgeon Brothers gimmick annoy me as much as it was. So here for me is, personally, my match of the night. This was the Intercontinental Championship match. It was uh, Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Seth Rollins and The Miz. Uh, I, I kind of expected the, the Miz to walk away with this, but after seeing the Jinder Mahal versus Jeff Hardy match, I knew that it wasn't happening. It had to be someone from Raw winning it. Quite a few good spots in this one. I'd say my favourite spot in this one was actually um, Finn Balor hitting Coup de Gras onto The Miz, who was lying on the ladder. Just, just it, it looked amazing, and it looked like it probably did really hurt The Miz. The ending to the match, absolutely brilliant. Uh, Finn Balor up on top of the ladder, reaching for the title. Then out of nowhere, Seth Rollins just comes charging in straight up and just pulls the title down like Finn Balor's still up there and he's, he just pulls the title down great ending to the match um, yeah my, my match of the night there the next match was AJ Styles against Shinsuke Nakamura it was a pretty okay match I just feel like there was there was a lot missing from it whenever these two fight you can't say that it's a bad match because it it wasn't a bad match by any account, it's, it just feels like there's something missing. So hopefully when they come to 
the third third match. This will probably be the third and final match to round it all out. Hopefully we'll get the match that we actually won. We know that these two could put on this fantastic match and it's just a shame to see it going down the way that it has been. Ending with AJ and Shinsuke on the double count out and then AJ just snapping. I don't think that was a bad way to go. AJ just snapped and then just totally annihilated Shinsuke. I liked it. Double count out for the end of the match, so no one actually won. Now we move on to The Undertaker versus Rusev. On the one hand, it wasn't a squash match really. Rusev did get in a, a bit of offense, which I guess was good. But they're burying Rusev and I hate to see it happen. Rusev is one of your top caliber superstars. He is one of the best superstars on the roster. He's not being treated the way that he should be which I, I just hate it, I just absolutely hate it. And the way that it finished with both Rusev and Aiden English being put into the casket, I just didn't like it. Uh, Undertaker walked away with a victory there. I mean, it's, it's always nice to see The Undertaker winning, but this one, I guess I just wanted more from it. I just wanted Rusev to actually have a lot more offense and everything in this match. So the next match that we had was Brock Lesnar against Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship inside the cage. A lot of offense in this match, which you do like to see. Like, if you're a wrestling fan, you want to see offense going constantly. I didn't want to see Brock Lesnar walk away with a championship here. It means that we're hardly ever going to see the championship on Raw. It means that we're hardly ever going to see the championship being defended. And it just pisses me off. I mean, the way that it ended as well, it, it could have been a great ending. Like, Roman Reigns hitting the spear and Brock Lesnar and him both going through the cage. Uh, Brock Lesnar's back hit the floor first. But the rules of it are, your feet have to hit the floor. Whoever's feet hit the floor first, win the match. And the fact of the matter is, Roman Reigns' feet hit the, hit the floor first. So, I don't know what they're going to do with this angle. Maybe they're going to dispute it. I don't know. But please just take the title away from Brock. Uh, the next match that we had was the Greatest Royal Rumble. Even though there was a lot of botches in this and it didn't really feel like much of a Royal Rumble, it did have a few spots in it. One of the things was um, Chris Jericho's return. Chris Jericho's return, coming back, he's got the list with him and everything, that was brilliant. Uh, the way it came down to the ring with Kevin Owens screaming at him, go back to Japan, that, it just felt right. That, that actually just did feel right for Chris Jericho's return. Another spot that we had, we had the infamous Kofi Kingston save. Uh, I actually did like this, um, not the way he was saved, but the way he came back into the ring, uh, going up to the top post and then jumping off Xavier Woods' back to take down everyone. I, I, I did like that. It was a nice little spot. Spot of the night actually has to go to Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil <laughs> running down to the ring, <laughs> trips up and goes right under the ring. That was fucking hilarious. Watch it, let's watch it again. And look at this. He tripped there and he actually went body first. He's like 6'8", right? He went through the ring. It's going to follow him for the rest of his career. There's nothing he can do. The amount of replays they showed just on Titus O'Neil falling. The best thing to come out of this rumble, Daniel Bryan has actually beat Rey Mysterio's old record for the longest time in a rumble. The last time that I heard was one hour and five minutes but it was longer than that. Also talking about Daniel Bryan, his chest and his arm, oh my God, they, they, he, he looked just completely battered and bruised, yet he was still going, he was still pushing. That's the thing about Daniel Bryan, he never quits, he never stops. He is probably the most dedicated re wrestler on the roster, maybe even around the world. And then we get down to the final three, it was the final three were Daniel Bryan, who had actually came in at number one, uh, Big Cass and Braun Strowman. Now, obviously, it had um, Big Cass throwing out 
Daniel Bryan, this kind of pushes their feud going on to Backlash. Then it had Braun Strowman taking away the victory. Um, good call. Uh, when it came down to it, I said there was only a few people uh, towards the end who actually deserved to get the win. And I feel like Braun Strowman was one of them. He, he's going to be coming out now with the Greatest Rumble title, so he is walking around with the title now, which is great for him. And not a bad call. Now, all in all, more of a house show than a pay-per-view. I guess we'll just have to see what happens on Monday coming up out of this. So now we move on to the forfeit. Uh, we've got them all in here. The winner of this head-to-head -head predictions was Thomas. So yeah, uh, we've got all the predict we've got all the forfeits in here. We're just giving them a mix up. Tom's gonna hold it while I pull one out. So yeah, uh, time to. Pick out my punishment. We got one. Okay, sir. Isn't he a lovely assistant? Alright, we best get ready to do this. Ooh. Guess I'm punching you. We got. There we go, the one inch punch. Uh, chest, we're, 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 chest. we're doing it to chest or I'm, to the side of face? I'll do it to chest. <laughs> Remember, I I asked for this. Ready? I'm ready. You know what a one inch punch is, don't you? Yes. Like Nipple back or anything, just straight. Oh! Fucking knuckles! Ah! Oh! The worst part of that is I've still got a workout to do now. Ah. Yeah, so there's the first, there's the first punishment. Ow! We hope you did like this video. I know he did. I did. But yeah, we're gonna be doing a lot more of these. There's there's a lot more punishments still left in the box. Um, each time there's a pay-per-view, we're going to continue to do these. Um, so yeah, be ready because the next pay-per-view is actually Backlash, which is this Sunday. Which is actually a pay-per-view. Yeah. So yeah, if you did like this video, give it a like. Comment down below any punishments you think should go into the box. We'd like, we would actually love to hear him. He, he, he just loves torturing me. Yeah. But I'm gonna get the last laugh, the last laugh on the next one. <laughs> That's what you think. Um, subscribe and hit that notification button so that you can always stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.